Hey everybody, it's James here from GoodGuitarist.com and in today's lesson I'm going to show you how to play This Land Is Your Land by Woody Guthrie. Now this is a simple three chord tune. The hardest part is keeping track of when to switch chords because there's all these subtle little differences since it follows the lyrics, you know, and he'll add a couple extra words here and there so we have to add an extra measure here and there. That's the hardest part, but the, the chord shapes are simple, the strumming pattern is simple. We have a few options for the strumming, a really simple one and then a bit more of a country style one. Uh, if along the way you find you need any extra help, there's my free ebook which will help you with all the basics of chords and strumming and putting that all together. My complete beginner's course which walks you through that entire process from start to finish. and. Um, I have some other stuff too. I'll put links to all that down below. There's also a chord chart on my Patreon that'll help you follow along with this song. Um, otherwise, let's just jump right in and get started with the chord shapes. First, we have a D chord. Then we have G. And I recommend playing G this way. I know there's a few options with G, but when we're switching from D to G, we can leave our ring finger down and that makes it so much simpler. You know, just doing that, just pivoting, just practice that, pivoting off of your ring finger. I lift up these two fingers, transition into G. I lower my thumb a little bit. Then when I go into D, my thumb comes up a little bit. You know, just pay attention to those little details. Make it comfortable and be consistent and build up that muscle memory. So that's D to G. And then it would go back to D. And then we would go to our A chord. And when we're switching from D to A, we leave our ring finger down once again slide it to the second fret, and then we can finish up our A shape. And that's a bit of an easier way to switch to A. Going back to D, we just reverse the steps. Lift those two fingers, up with the ring finger, you know, just like that. So practice that if you're not familiar and not comfortable, completely comfortable making those switches. Try using those tricks to make it a little bit simpler. I also have my ebook, like I mentioned before, my beginner's course, and they're all about that stuff. Anyways, those are all the chord shapes we need for this tune. So let's practice them in order, counting downstrokes only, you know, just so we can get them in the right order and practice the transitions a little bit. Starting off on G. One, two, three. This land is one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. D, two, three, four. One. all over again. Back to G. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. D. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. A. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. D. Two, three, four. Is the entire chord progression. You just play that six times over and that's the entire song. So let's take a moment now and add the strumming pattern to it. We have a couple options. First I'll show you the easier option. Let's do it on a G chord. I'll do it a little bit slower. Three and four. And To learn it we can break it down into two halves. First we have root down. And root means to just hit the thicker strings of that chord shape. So on a G chord, those are the thicker strings. On beat one, we're doing a root, and on beat two, we're doing a downstroke. Three, four, root, down, three, four, root. And the second half is very similar. We're going root down up. So a root on beat three and then a down up on beat four. One, two, root, down, up. One, two, root, down, up. One, two. And then we can put that whole thing together. And I want you to just think about it like there's four beats. We have a root on beat one, a down on beat two, a root on beat three, and then a down up on beat four. You know, you're just going between one of those motions. 
Let's try that out. Three, four. trying it over D, it helps to put your thumb covering up the thickest string. That way, when you're doing your root, it's not going to, you know, it's not going to sound like that. So that's the easy pattern. Let's take a moment and apply it to our chord progression, and then we'll take a look at the more intermediate strumming pattern for this song. Starting off on G, one, two, three, four. Now the intermediate strumming pattern goes like this. And that's really similar. The only difference is we're picking out particular root notes. So I'm going root, down, and then I'm playing another bass note, down, up. And for root, we'll call, you'll see an R, and then that other bass note is our alternative bass note. So I'll put A for that. So R, down, a down up you know the the basis of the pattern is the same but instead of just going root and just hitting the thicker strings we're picking out two particular notes which is dependent on the chord shape for g our root is right here on the thickest string so root down let's just practice that a little bit and then the alternative bass note, or the alternate bass note, is here on the D string. So we're going to pluck the D string and then down up. This is definitely about accuracy, about being able to hit the correct string. If something like this seems impossible to you, I have a a mini series on YouTube, a free mini series that I made called the Isolation Challenge Volume 1. I'll put a link to that in the corner and I'll put a link to it down below and it'll show you how to do that country bass picking style in, in a bit more of an accessible or you know over the course of eight lessons instead of over the course of a, of a couple minutes like we're going to be doing right now. Anyways, so we have our G chord, our root is here, our alternate bass notes there. Let's just try this super slowly going between the two. Root, down, down. So that's the G chord. Now for the A chord, our root is on the A string. So we can just practice going like that, just root, down. And our alternate bass note is the D string. So A, D. You know, and just practice that a little bit, going between those two. And then finally, for the D shape, our root is the D string. And then our alternate bass note is the A string. Now just some general tips when you're trying to do this style. First is keep your strumming motion a bit smaller. That way you have less room to travel. You know, if you're going all the way over there for your downstroke, you have a long way to get back to that other note and it's going to be 
the chances of being accurate go down. Um, so try to play a little bit quieter. Don't play as hard. Don't play as big. You know, still want to have nice smooth motions. But and the second thing is, if you get the wrong string, it doesn't really matter. You know, when you listen to the recording, just listen to Woody Guthrie playing this. He misses and he'll play the other string or whatever, and it sounds fine. You know, you wouldn't notice that unless somebody pointed it out, and it doesn't mean that it's not great. It just those imperfections are what make music, right? That's what makes us human. So give yourself a bit of a break, right? It's it's good when you're practicing it to try to be 100% accurate, but when you go to play it, if you miss a string or whatever, it's not a big deal. Anyways, practice over each of those three shapes using the correct root and alternate bass notes with the same pattern that we did before, but now we're picking out the bass notes. I'll have a diagram right there. You can see everything. And when you're ready, we're gonna put that together with the chords and that's it. So let's start off on a G chord. One, two, three, four. on so that's all there is to it now at this point there's just a few finishing touches that we need to talk about in order to complete this uh, first thing is if you want to play along with the original recording you have to put a capo on the first fret and do everything just like we were doing and it'll be in the same key as how Woody Guthrie is playing it um, another thing is what we did that's the basic chord progression but when you listen to the recording, you'll notice like, oh, he's hanging on to that D chord for an extra measure, or he's you know doing something a little bit more or a little bit less. And I've written that all down here. Let's just take a look at the differences. Verse two and verse six are just like how we, we've been playing it this entire time. They're exactly like that. Verse one and verse five are just like we did, except there's one extra measure of D at the very end. Verse three, is just like what we've been doing, except there's two extra measures of D at the very end. Verse four is like what we've been doing, except halfway through it, there's an extra measure of D, and at the very end, there's two extra measures of D. So I'm gonna play through that one just because it's a little bit different than the rest. It's similar, but I'll just play through it just to clarify. So he just adds extra measures of D throughout the tune, you know, and that's it. That's Those are the only variations in the verses. There's also an instrumental part, and the instrumental part uses the same chords, but the progression is a little bit different. It goes like this. Three and four. So you might want to rewind that and try it a few times just to get used to the instrumental part. Uh, but all in all, those are all the variations in this tune. And for a song like this, I like to write that kind of stuff down. And I did. I put it in the chord chart on the Patreon. Um, but I'll also just put a little bit up here so you can just see. And you can always just print out the lyrics and write out the chords over top. Either way, um, this tune isn't too difficult if you just want to play it the way that we were practicing it before and sing it yourself. You know, you don't have to add those extra measures. I just wanted to explain what the original version was like in case you're trying to play along and play it exactly like Woody Guthrie would be playing it. 
Otherwise, have a fun time practicing this one. Don't forget about my resources. There's my free ebook. There's my complete beginner's course. I just released a course on strumming that will help you learn to strum and sing at the same time and a bunch of other stuff. And then there's that chord chart on the Patreon. Otherwise, have a fun time practicing and I'll see you soon.